Hello and welcome to the DIY hosting of an email server video series. In this video series I'm demonstrating how you can host an email server on a Raspberry Pi with the traffic passing through your home router for free. This video series is part of a larger video series which includes hosting a website on a Raspberry Pi, again for free, and setting up a continuous integration pipeline for WordPress. So please do check out my playlists on my channel for more content you may like. OK, enough of that, let's get going with this video. In this second technical video on the subject of hosting an email server, we'll take a look at the Telnet tool and how we can use it to validate that our SMTP server we set up is functioning correctly by sending an email. It's a very important thing to do, and we do this at a few critical stages throughout the setup process of the email server. And this is one of those stages. We've just got our SMTP server running. We necessarily need to check that it can send emails. So this will be a nice and short video. So let's get going over to the desktop where we'll send our first email from our Raspberry Pi. Okay, here we are on my desktop with my PowerShell window open and ready to go. I'm going to use my SSH alias Pi, which was set up in a previous video in the WordPress series. I'm going to use that to SSH into my Raspberry Pi 3. There we go. And now I'm going to install the Telnet tool. So we do that as we have previously installed tools as follows. We type in sudo apt get install telnet. Okay, with that finished, um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the telnet tool before we get going with it. So telnet is a utility for sending communication traffic over TCP and indeed receiving it. But it's a command line system, so you have to type in a few commands after each other to tell Telnet what you want to do. In our case, we're going to use Telnet to send an email. Uh, we're going to send an email to, well, in your case, you'll send an email to your own email account, some other email account you've got access to. And we'll include some information in the subject header and the body, just so you know it's working. Uh, and then we'll exit that and then you'll have to go to your email client for that email account, maybe Outlook or Gmail or Yahoo, and you should see the email appear. So let's get going. I'll show you this, how it actually looks. So telnet localhost 25 is the first command you're going to type. The reason we're typing that is because the email server typically runs, SMTP server typically runs on port 25. And of course, we've got our SMTP server postfix running as a service, as we demonstrated in the previous video, uh, on our local Raspberry Pi. So the address is localhost and the port is 25. So we're telling Telnet that is what we're going to use to communicate with. So press enter. Right, so with that started up, you can see in my case, I actually got a timeout exceeded error. This was because I paused the video and came back to it. So I've had to type it in again. So in case you're wondering why I've got Telnet localhost 25 twice, that's because I paused it and came away and have come back. So it timed out. So I've connected up again. And what you can see is the first thing it tells you is uh, Telnet has connected or at least recognized an SMTP server. In this case, Postfix is running. And now it's waiting for us to enter a command. So we're going to type in a few commands and I'll explain what they are afterwards. So first I'm going to type in EHLO followed by your domain name. So in my case, single-entity.com. But you need to put your domain in there and press enter. Great. So what this is telling us is these are what the server is providing. These are the things that it's, it, it actually can offer us. And we might look at that later um, to understand what some of these are, particularly when we uh, add some verification. We'll start seeing some additional things added here. But for now, we'll just carry on. So basically, the EHLO command has said, this is me, uh, but I'll talk about that more in a few minutes. And then we're going to type in mail from colon. So make sure this is character perfect, mail space from colon. And this is basically the sender's name, and it can be anything at this point. So we're just going to use pi, because I'm using my user pi, uh, but it can be anything. Uh, and then receipt two, so RCPT space two colon and this needs to be some email account of yours it doesn't matter what it is um, I'm going to put a fake one in for now so I'm going to put in info at nowhere.com in fact I'm going to make this oops I'm going to make this even more abstract because I really don't want this to actually go to somebody's email account uh, for now 
but put your actual email address in. So this needs to be an email account like an Outlook or a Gmail or any other email account you have access to because that's where your email is going to go. So put that in there. It'll say OK again. And now you need to type in data and press enter. And that's because data will start the data command series, which means everything you enter from now on until you just have a period will be content that's going to go through the TCP connection. Now, because we're sending an email, it'll recognize the subject line. So if we type subject colon space, we can now add the title of the email. So you can put in email from and whatever you like, my Raspberry Pi. Okay, so that will be the subject of the email, press enter. And then we need to add some more data. That's going to be the body. So this is, this is the body of the email from my Raspberry Pi. Okay, enter. To end the content of your email using Telnet, we just have to have a period and we press enter and that will end the transmission. There we go. So it's queued, which means it's a job that's been queued. So it basically will have been sent. We now type in quit. There we go, to exit. Uh, the Telnet, Telnet interface. So that's it. You've sent an email using Telnet. You've sent it to the address that's written here. Um, it will be your obviously your account here. Uh, and you've done so as though your your domain name and using the user pi. So the email you should receive will say pi at, in my case, singleentity.com, but in your case, it will be your domain. So you might be thinking right now, hang on a minute. I can send an email, but I could make this up. It doesn't have to be me. And you'd be right. You could put anything in the EHLO command at the moment and, and identify yourself as anybody. You could put Facebook here. You could put Yahoo. You could put anything. It doesn't matter. This is, it will be important, but at the moment it isn't. You could send an email to anywhere and make it appear as though it's coming from anywhere. Uh, and th that is very powerful and it's quite an eye-opener when you first do this. But your emails will end up in the spam box of your recipient. Um, so because, of course, it, it, there's no guarantee this is a legitimate email because we've just sent it by sending using Telnet, um, using our SMTP server and our Raspberry Pi at home. Clearly, if we can do this, anybody can and it's open to abuse. So we're going to have to go through a lot of hoops later on in this video series to make it so these are legitimate emails. But for now, um, if you've got your email uh, sent and received in your, um, in your other email account that you have access to, then well done. You know that your SMTP server is running as it should. Right, before I finish this video, I did say I was going to mention what some of these things are. In particular, I want to talk about the EHLO command. So this is what is driving who the email appears to be coming from. And like I say, you could change this and it would say something else and it would work. The reason why EHLO is used, it well, there's a few reasons, but the one that's of particular importance to us, it's how the SMTP server identifies itself when connecting to another email server. And it's going to help us with blocking spam later on. And it's also going to help us validate that our email server is a legitimate one. Whereas right now the internet and the recipient does not know who we are and it's just going to say, yeah, I don't know who you are. You don't follow any of our requirements to make it look as if this is a real email server. So this is going straight to the spam box. And that's quite correct. And it's exactly what it should do. But we need to change that later on and we will do. And EHLO is one of the things we're going to focus on uh, to start filtering emails and make sure this is doing what it should do. OK, that's it for now. Um, I will see you in the next video as we continue our adventure. We're going to look at making the emails more secure, particularly your own email server more secure. At the moment, it's wide open to abuse, so we're going to look at hardening it up. OK, if you liked this video, please do like it. It helps me to see that people actually find it useful. And I'd very much appreciate if you could subscribe to my video course. It's a great metric for me to understand if people are enjoying it and finding it useful. Okay, thank you very much and I will see you in the next video.